Hello, Brett Gallant, Sierra West Scale Models. Welcome to Craftsman Kit University. Weathering Resin Castings Part 2. Chipped, cracked, and peeling paint effects on oil drums and acetylene tanks. We begin with one of the O-Scale oil drums we prepped in Part 1. Talk about brushes for a minute. The appropriate paintbrush will make all the difference. You can see this brush is too wide to fit in between the bands, no matter which way we turn it. This nice, sharp-edged, chiseled brush fits perfectly against the band and will allow you to create a nice, straight, clean line with the paint with minimal effort. When painting the top, you do not want to paint from the outside rim to the inside. You'll get paint on the side of the drum, but rather you want to start on the center of the drum and lightly paint outwards. This will keep the paint, or at least minimize the chance of getting paint on the side of the drum. So the brush you choose is very important. There are many different color combinations and different ways to paint the oil drum with those colors. We're gonna do the top of the oil drum and the center band red, then we're gonna do the top and the bottom bands bone. Make sure you get on the internet and do a search for old used oil drums. You'll find a lot of ideas there. You can see I've got my water-based paint loaded up on the brush. I'm starting at the center of the top of the drum and very lightly brushing outward. Now many times it's going to require a second coat to get complete coverage with a water-based paint, so I'm not going to worry about trying to get complete coverage. I'm going to keep it nice and clean and neat. I'm rotating the drum underneath the brush. I'm not moving the brush. I'm moving the drum, redipping my paintbrush as needed, and using that sharp chiseled edge to get a nice, clean, straight line. This is very simple to do. My hands are braced firmly on the workbench top, and I'm rolling the drum underneath the paintbrush. The only difference between painting an O-scale oil drum and an HO-scale oil drum is that I would be using a smaller brush that's appropriately sized to fit the bands if this were HO-scale. So as we move to our bone-colored paint, we are once again bracing our hands firmly on the workbench and rotating the oil drum underneath the brush, holding everything steady. Now you can see here how neat and even and clean my lines are using the actual raised ribs on the casting to help guide the chiseled edge of the brush. While I finish painting this oil drum, let's talk for a moment about the different brands and types of water-based paint on the market that are best suited for these techniques. I prefer the Reaper Miniatures brand. They have a great color selection and they hold up well to the techniques that we'll be performing next, much better than the inexpensive craft store squeeze bottle paints. The Vallejo brand makes an excellent quality paint, but it's a vinyl-based pigment and it doesn't work well with the techniques that follow because that vinyl gets shiny as it's worked. It's been a problem that many modelers have experienced. As we move forward with the actual technique that will peel the paint, it's important to remember that this is something that you should be experimenting with. While that paint is still wet and has not fully dried, simply lay the oil drum flat on your workbench and hit it with a wire brush. You don't want to brush back and forth or up and down. You want to simply hit it directly on top of the drum using a steel bristled brush. This technique will not work with a nylon or a brass brush or with metal castings. If the paint has dried too much, you can simply come back and add a new coating of paint on top of what's underneath. You can even apply successive layers that are different colors, chipping each one as you go. This multi-layering creates some fantastic effects and makes your oil drum so interesting. You know, this technique is extremely fast and simple to apply to your oil drums. You roll that oil drum on your workbench while you're tapping away until you're satisfied with the results. If you're not getting the look you want, you probably are using either the wrong kind of paint or the paint has dried too much. Let's finish this oil drum off by applying a heavy layer of rust colored chalk powder from this box of random sticks that I've collected over the years. This is a nice soft bristled brush giving me a good random application on top of the drum. Now we're going to dip the drum into a jar of plain rubbing alcohol and swirl it around, removing most of the chalk powder. Don't let the chalk sit on the oil drum long after you've applied it before swirling it in the rubbing alcohol. This oil drum is done. We're going to let it dry. Going to get some great looking effects on top of the drum by letting that rubbing alcohol evaporate. 
Let's use the same technique on this HO scale acetylene tank that I've just painted, tapping it with the wire brush, rolling it on my workbench. Unlike the oil drums, it's okay to roll the acetylene tank under your brush to get back and forth and up and down patterns. Acetylene tanks simply weather differently than oil drums. If the paint dries, dip it in the rubbing alcohol and continue to hit away at it with the wire brush. You know, you can experiment with different bristle sizes, thicker, longer, firmer, to get different effects on your oil drums and your acetylene tanks. One finishing touch I like to apply is I'll remove a lot of the paint on the collar of the acetylene tank with the edge of a paper towel. Be sure to visit the Craftsman Kit University link on the SierraWestScaleModels.com website. There you'll find more information on this technique as well as materials and supplier listings.